Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking about functions again. If you missed the previous video, then you might not have an idea of what I'm talking about. And you could solve that by going back and watching the previous video. Uh, but there's a pretty good chance that you could figure out what's going on. So in theory, we've created a form. And on this form, the user is going to enter his or her level. And that level is going to determine what kind of a bad guy we're going to generate. So if I switch over to the code view, you can see what we've done so far. Uh, we're using random numbers here, so the enemies are going to be different every time. And then so the only two things we're concerning ourselves with regarding the enemies is their speed and their strength. They could have all kinds of other variables, um, but we're just going to say speed and strength. So in the first video, we wrote a function to set the speed. And I made a design decision, and that decision was that if the player is on level 1, the enemies are going to move at a certain speed. If the player is on level 50, the enemies are going to move at that same speed. Now you could change that if you wanted, but I thought that sounded like a good idea because you could imagine if the player was on level 100 and the enemies were moving 100 times faster, that'd probably be a problem. So we wrote a really simple function which had no parameters because it really didn't need to communicate with the program. In fact, we had this text box here, but we never even got any information out of it. One of the things that's different from the last video to this video is I turned on option strict, which you should have on. And that is why I have an error, er, an error right here. That error is because I've got a message box, and a message box expects to be passed a string. And speed's an integer. So if I want to make that into a string, that can be solved with a C ster, or <laughs> a C string. All right, so that converts it to a string. We're all good there. Now what I need to do is I need to actually pick the level off of the form because presumably it was entered by the user and I have to decide what I want that to be. I would assume the player's level is going to be an integer and I'm going to assign it on the fly. So I'm going to say it's equal to whatever was entered in the text box. This should give us an error. All right, if you don't have an error there, it's because you don't have option strict on. You should have it on. And the problem here is that this is an integer. A text box is always uh, text. So I need to do a C int, convert it to an integer. So now we've stripped this level out of the form, and I need to create a function. And I'm going to call that function set strength. So I'm going to head down here and define the function. So it's called set strength. Now, here's where things get a little bit different. I'm going to say that the strength of the enemy should be dependent on the player's level. So if the, le if the player is on level 1, he should be writing, or the uh, enemy should have a low number of strength. And if the player is on a high level, the enemy should have a lot of strength. So what needs to happen is the set strength function needs to know about the player's level. So that sounds like I need a parameter. And so that parameter, I'm going to call it str. And its type is going to be an integer. It could be anything, but I know it's an integer up here, right? And level's an integer. And I just made a bit of a mistake. I guess we can learn from this. I passed it strength. That's not what I wanted to pass it. I wanted to pass it level. Kind of irrelevant, but we'll just deal, deal with that. And so what should it return? It's going to be returning strength. That sounds like an integer to me. So now time for a little bit of math. So what do we want to do with this? And this is entirely a design issue. So I'm going to say that I want this program to return. It's going to be similar syntax to what we did last time. And so I got to make a decision here. So what should it return? Something like uh, something between 100 and 200? I could do something like that. And so the strength would just be between 100 and 200. But there's this idea that I would actually like my program to consider the player's level. So I'm going to use a little algebra here, and I'm going to do something like 5 times level to 7 times level. In other words, a random number is going to be generated, and the bottom end of that random number is going to be 5 times the player's level. In other words, if the player's level is 1, it's going to return a number between 5 and 7. If the player's level is 100, it's going to return a value between 500 and 700. So the strength is getting scaled, which is probably what I want. In this, in this instance, it is what I want. So I've created a function called setStrength, but notice I never used it. So what I'm going to do is right here, just like I used a function to set speed, I'm going to set strength down here. 
and I'm going to pass it the player's level. Notice that I'm passing it something called level right here. I'm passing it an integer, and this is whatever was entered in the form, and I pass it, and, it, and that gets stored down here locally. And notice that they don't have the same name. I could call this level if I wanted to, but I actually like to call it something different so we can actually illustrate the concept that there's really no relationship between the name of this variable and the name of this variable. There is, however, a relationship between the type. Notice that this is an integer, and this is an integer. And that is what matters. So if I took this function and I tried to pass it a string, it wouldn't work because there's not a function called set strength that takes a string. And so what I want to do now is I'm just going to do the simplest debugging strategy I can. Uh, instead of displaying speed, I'm going to display strength. Now let's just make sure that it's doing something appropriate. So I'm going to debug this thing. I'll put in a level like 10. And I get a strength of 63. I don't know if that's good. Maybe it is. I like to do it twice with the same number. Make sure it actually is random, because sometimes it's not. And let's do level 100. And you can see that depending on the user's level, we're getting higher strengths, which is good. Uh, and contrast this with speed, where speed, there was no communication between here and here. Right? It was it, This operates independent of the player's level, whereas this depends on the player's level. And so, again, if we decided that this was too much strength or too little strength, we could just change our math down here, just change our, our, uh, our ratio of strength to player level. And so we could make, by changing one line, we could affect the way that all the enemies behave throughout our game, which is one reason why you would use functions. Another thing, just uh, I could do it in the next video, but I'm going to do it in this one. You notice my, my program is, is getting broken up into quite a few pieces. At this point, I should probably start using some comments. And so when you've got these functions, you might want to write a comment and says what it does. Set speed between 10 and 20. Right, and here, this is going to be a little more. So set strength um, between 5 and 7 times level. So this is kind of just to keep your own sanity and realize what you were thinking when you wrote the function. And it's also if you ever need to pass this off to someone else so they can figure out just what in the heck you were thinking. Because just looking at this right here, if you didn't know what gen was, right? Gen's referring to our generator up here. And you're wondering what in the heck's going on. So comments starting to become a more important idea. In my next example, we're going to look at a function that takes two arguments. So I will see you then.